Тогда хочу задаться вопросом, а зачем нам такой мир, если там не будет России? Чувство ответственности, когда от вашего решения зависят судьбы миллионов людей, когда речь идет о ядерной кнопке, если не всего человечества. Как принимается вот это решение? Как эту ответственность каждый день нести? Ну, это на, на ответственность неизбежно. Это часть, часть работы. И прежде чем принять такие решения, нужно, конечно, все очень хорошо взвесить. А что касается, что касается ядерной кнопки, это вообще, ну, так мягко говоря, ну, как бы вопрос не очень корректный, я считаю. Извините. Да, ну, должен задать. Ну да, да. Но все-таки, во-первых, не мы это начали. Напомню, что ядерная бомба, атомная бомба появилась впервые не у нас, а в Соединенных Штатах. Это первое. Второе. Мы никогда не применяли ядерного оружия. Соединенные Штаты применили против Японии. Штаты это сделали. Где гарантия, что это не повторится? Да, это второе. Третье. Не мы являемся только ядерной державой. Ядерной державой. Но хочу вам сказать, и хочу, чтобы об этом узнали и у нас, и за рубежом. Ведь наши, э, наши планы применения, надеюсь, что этого никогда не будет, но теоретические планы применения – это так называемый ответ на встречный удар. Если кем-то принято решение уничтожить Россию, тогда э, у нас возникает законное право ответить. Да, для человечества это будет глобальная катастрофа. Для мира будет глобальная, глобальная катастрофа. Но я все-таки как гражданин России и, и глава российского государства тогда хочу задаться вопросом, а зачем нам такой мир, если там не будет России? But if you go to Surah Al-Rahman, you'll see the Malhama in Surah Al-Rahman. And you'll see who the Malhama is going to be attacking, who are going to be destroyed in the Malhama. And you'll see the evidence in Surah Al-Rahman that, that is most certainly uh, harmonious with a, harmon with a, a nuclear war. Meaning two. Two people. Allah is addressing two people. And these are two people who reject the truth. Reject what has come from Allah. The kuffar front. This side kuffar. This side kuffar. Your centuries of oppression will come to an end one day. When will it? Sanafrugu lakum. I'm going to Sanafru, we are going to deal with you. That's what the Surah Rahman is saying. <laughs> this is a powerful punch. We're going to deal with you too. You are too laden with sin. The Quran, the, the Surah identifies them. 
يا معشر الجن والإنس. It is a community of human beings who are evil. Not all human beings. A community of human beings who are evil. And a community of jinn who are not Muslims, they are kuffar, evil. And these two are in alliance with each other. This is what the Quran, the Surah to Rahman, is directing our attention to. And we're going to send against you a flash of fire, followed by smoke. Think, think. <laughs> In Surah Al Isra, he said, "وَإِن مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُغْلِقُهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهَا ذَابًا شَدِيدًا." Not a single town or city will, be, will escape, but we're going to destroy them all. My understanding is nuclear war. The Surah to Rahman is anticipating nuclear war. Flash of fire followed by smoke, and every town and city which ought to be destroyed will be destroyed. Yeah. Thirty-one times, Rabbi Kuma means two people, one human beings and the other jinn, and both evil. Hmm? So the verse of the Quran which is linked with Star Wars and with shooting arrows up into the sky, which is the missiles and so on, is the ayah which, in which Allah says, Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-ins. And he's not speaking to all human beings. And he's not speaking to all jinns. He's speaking to the human beings and the jinn who have been constantly addressed in this surah. And 31 times he has asked them. He has said, Fabi ayya So you can't make a mistake. Who is he talking about? He's talking about this community of human beings who are evil and this community of jinn who are evil and who are in alliance with each other and it is these people who address Ya Ma'ashar al-Jinni wal-Ins 
In ista tatu man tanfuzu min aktaris samawat daya the star wars aktaris samawat wal ar if you wish to embark on the effort to explore and penetrate the stratas of the sky and the samawat and the stratas of the earth which includes the ocean the depths of the ocean tanfuzu go ahead and pursue the effort so the jinn are helping human beings in this effort of missiles and satellites and all of these things they accepted the offer and then the modern scientific and revolution scientific and technological revolution emerged and all this exploration of sky to the, the space space travel and so on all of this emerged because of this invitation fundu and so the intercontinental <laughs> ballistic missiles nuclear missiles nuclear submarines and so on and satellite military platform to the sky and so on because of this invitation allah is not speaking to all human beings and all jinn but how does the ayah end allah says la tanfuzuna illa bi sultan that you cannot penetrate the skies space travel satellites drones robotic submarines and so on you cannot do it drones you cannot do it illa bi sultan it is not possible for you to do it unless i authorize it without my authority a possible not a possible not possible so therefore can you read between the lines that on that day when i withdraw my authority your missiles won't fire so now you can understand sana flugu lakum ayyuhal faqara i'm going to deal with you i'm going to deal with you you silly people this is what surah rahman is saying when i withdraw my authority your missiles won't fly allah is not talking about russia where a man cannot marry another man and get a marriage certificate he's not talking about russia where you do not have a banking system and a monetary system oppressing mankind and ripping them off rather russia is being targeted by them sanctions and sanctions and sanctions trying to destroy their money so russia is being targeted by the oppressor russia is oppressed if you don't know that go back to school and finally russia doesn't want to rule the world no these are the ones who want to rule the world the western world and because russia refuses to bow and submit to them and because russia has refused china now has some courage china says we too because they refused to bow and submit pakistan of course was the first to bow say and come let me clean your shoes for you we ready to clean your shoes for you so our children could go to school in united states yeah so our children could get scholarship to go to united states at all but not russia and not china they are standing up to the oppressor and because they refuse to bow that is why they want to wage war on them so when allah decides to withhold his authority la tanfuzuna illa bi sultan why should he withdraw which which draw his authority for russia when russia is not an oppressor so now i think i've said enough nato is of course won't be able to eat their food and digest their food now <laughs> now that the quran has spoken not imran from dewsbury the quran has spoken that this is what is going to happen in the war which is coming and we pray for it with all our hearts Amen. that allah will choose this moment to fulfill his promise in surah ar-rahman surah al-isra Where Allah says, "Wa imin kariyatin, 
إلا نحن مهلكوها قبل يوم القيامة أو معذبوها عذابا شديدا كان ذلك في الكتاب مفتورا and not a single town and city will escape we'll destroy them all and those which are not destroyed will be punished with terrible terrible punishment and this is something inscribed in the book and so now our first comment is that Allah will destroy every town and every city which deserves to be destroyed every town and every city which deserves to be destroyed is a massive destruction in the world and for me a massive destruction of the in the world of every town and every city which earth ought to be destroyed is a one-time event The Quran speaks about two kinds of Christians. Two kinds of Christians. Who are those who in Akhir or Zaman will be the closest in love and affection to you Muslims? Allah speaks in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ma'ida, which is the fifth surah of the Quran. And he says, Lakajidanna. أقربهم مودة للذين آمنوا الذين قالوا إنا نصارى. Every single word in the Quran is so powerful, so we can see clearly who are the Christians, and you will most certainly find in time to come. That you will most certainly find at that time when the Quran was revealed and in the future. Now listen carefully. That there will be a Christian people in time to come who will be closest in love and affection for you, Muslims. Why? This is because they still have amongst them the integrity of the institution of priesthood and monasticism. The monastery, the monk, the monastic way of life. And because they are not an arrogant people. They are not an arrogant people. Who are they? Can we identify them? Which Christians is Allah speaking about? What is there in these Christian people? How can we recognize them? Is it the Roman Catholic Church? Or the Protestant Church? Which Christians is Allah speaking about? Allah gives us guidance by which to identify the Christians who will be closest in love and affection to us. Which is either present or future. Because this is fail modaria. Present and future. The Arabic uh, uh, verb. And you will most certainly find in time to come that those who will be closest in love and affection for you would be a people who proclaim we are Christians. Oh, but wait a minute. They don't proclaim themselves Christians in the United States, in Britain and France. No, no, no. Religion is a private affair. We will be secularized. We proclaim ourselves French and British and American. And religion is for Sunday morning. That couldn't be British and American and French Christians because they hide their religious identity. 
they secularize their religion. But these are a different kind of Christian people. They proclaim themselves, their identity. We are Christians. It has to be a different kind of Christian who proclaims my identity. I am Christian. So this could not be Western Christianity kindly eliminated. A Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for you Muslims at that time. As you found at the time of the Prophet when the Quran was revealed, when the Christians of Abyssinia, a Christian people, opened the doors opened their hearts and kept us as refugees. And when Makkah sent their emissaries to demand the repatriation of the runaway slaves, the Negus said, no, I'll never give them up. And we want to go and remind Bulgaria and remind Greece and remind Russia and remind the whole Orthodox Christian world this is what you were like once upon a time. You will most certainly find in time to come, not only at that time, but in the future as well, that those who will have the greatest love and affection for you Muslims will be a people who say we are Christians. That's not all. But there's a second reason, second, second thing that Allah speaks about. The Quran goes on to say, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ The reason why they will behave like this. You know these Christians because they still have the ulama. This is because they still have amongst them the integrity of the institution of priesthood intact. The religious scholars still have a status in that Christian people. That side of the world, the religious scholarship is gone. But this side of the world, the ulama of the Christians still have a very high status and a very important function in society. In that Christianity out there where a man could marry another man and get a marriage certificate, the priest is the laughing stock of the world. In this Christianity out here, Orthodox Christianity, the ulama or the priest still have a status, high status. And then Allah goes on to say something else, a third thing, a third thing, Baruchbana. There'll be another way you can recognize these Christians. What is it? And that is because they still have the institution of monasticism. Oh, eliminate Western Christianity. In Britain and in France and in the United States and Canada, the monastery is now McDonald's hamburgers. Or Kentucky Fried, or Pizza Hut. There are no more monasteries. The most monastic way of life is gone. Which Christians have the monastery today? Not Britain, not the United States, not France, not Germany, because the monastery today is McDonald's hamburgers. Or the monastery is today a bingo hall or dance hall. It's not just the monastery that goes up on sale and Madonna's buys it. The churches are also going up on sale all over. And the Muslims are buying churches, making their masjid, yeah, all over the place. Monastic way of life is disappearing. In the, the churches of Britain are being sold now. Masajid are coming up where there used to be a church. Four percent of the British people now go to church. Britain is essentially an atheist country. 
But these Christian people still have monasticism. But in this part of the Christian world, the monk still has an important place. The monastic way of life is still treasured, which is why Kosovo is such a difficult problem. Because Kosovo is the heart of the monastic life of the Orthodox Christian. And the Ottomans knew that. And Bill Clinton knew that very well at Daytona. Oh yes, anyway, the devils. So this is the Christian who will be the closest in love and affection for you. Which Christian people is Allah talking about? So you have to look for a Christian people who are still holding on to the monastic way of life. Where are they? Who are the Christians who to this day are holding on to monasticism? Even if you perceive them to be hostile to you now because of past grievances, the Quran cannot be false. You can change their hearts and tomorrow they'll be the closest in love and affection to you. Yes. I hope Egypt is listening. So you'll identify them, you recognize them because of the institution of monasticism. And then Allah says a fourth thing about them. But one more thing by which you can recognize this Christian with whom you will make an alliance. وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They're not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. It's because they do not have arrogance stamp on their forehead. These are not the Christians who want to get the whole world to become carbon copies of themselves. Huh? They're not an arrogant people who believe that they have a birthright of superiority. And that the rest of the world are like cockroaches. They're only natives and we have the burden to civilize the rest of the world. You can't study international relations and study the history of international politics without coming to face to face with this arrogance. Mm -hmm. The colonization of the rest of the world so that they can civilize the rest of the world. This is not Orthodox Christianity, not at all. When they launched their crusades, were they Christian crusades? Yes, it was a Pope who launched them, but it didn't look at all like Christian crusades. No. Why? Because they were not only after Jerusalem, they had two goals they wanted. Number one was Jerusalem and number two was Constantinople. Yes, they wanted Constantinople. They wanted Orthodox Christianity to bend its knee before Rome. And in one of the crusades, perhaps it was the third, they did succeed in conquering Constantinople. And they held it for 80 years. Hmm? They, they had Hagia Sophia, the greatest cathedral of Orthodox Christianity under their control for something like 80 years, until the Orthodox Christians were successful in throwing him out. But they treated the Orthodox Christians with contempt. So I don't think this can qualify as a Christian crusade or Christian jihad. It looks more to me like a European jihad rather than a Christian jihad. Hmm? Christianity of the West, you know it. You know Christianity of the West, very easy to recognize it. It is a Christianity which believes in a fellow with a very big beard. The only one allowed to keep a beard. Everybody has to shave off their beard. But he's allowed to keep his beard. Big, big white beard. 
and once a year he comes on a reindeer running crying through the sky yeah yeah and he's in every shopping mall now every shopping mall this is the western christianity and they celebrate their christmas on december 25th but not the other one the other christianity does not have christmas on 25th of december and the other christianity is the one which still has monasticism you can say what you want about them but you cannot dispute the fact that these are a people who are different from the west that one in the west is arrogant the arrogance of that christianity in the west which has allied itself with jews in a judeo-christian zionist alliance is that it wants to transform the rest of the world into carbon copies of itself so if you were to put on a sarong huh? nice for this kind of weather sarong is very comfortable look at that native huh? look at that native if you want to be civilized you got to dress the way we dress you got to put on trousers and shirt and tie and a jacket and then you are civilized they want us to all become carbon copies of themselves so if you serve me curry fish and rice that they eat with knife and fork and spoon and so on and if we want to eat a nasi biryani and we wash our hands and eat and i roll up my sleeve and i wash my hands and like a good malay i eat with my hand my fingers that's the only way you could eat curry fish and rice they say what a barbarian he is this is uncivilized you should eat the way we eat with cutlery yeah curry fish and rice with cutlery you must dress the way we dress take off that dirty beard from off your face a civilized man is clean shaven a civilized man wears a shirt and trousers and jacket and tie i say that's arrogance and there are many who say the same thing as that that's arrogance that we i people who want when we want to do our numbers past urine and past two we go outside and they say if you do that outside you are uncivilized you must have a toilet inside <laughs> huh? who are these people walantarla ankal yahuda walan nasara hatta tatabi millatahu they are the western european judeo christian alliance well i say to you you can take your civilization and throw it in a garbage bin because i'm not impressed with your scientific and technological revolution and all this gadgetry that you're bringing to the world when in your civilization the highest thing you've ever achieved is a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate that is your highest achievement a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate and yet everybody want a visa to go and live amongst you that is heaven who wants to go and live in bangladesh who wants to go and live in egypt who wants to go back to algeria no that's heaven where a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate guess what allah did to those who are doing that guess what he did to solomon gomorrah gomorrah and guess what he's going to do to you tomorrow yes he destroyed them with a destruction that sent them to the lowest part of the earth with evidence of the remain for forever this is allah's punishment on them sodom and gomorrah uh, the people of lut and what he did to them he'll do to this world when you you are content to live amongst the people 
who legitimize and legalize the marriage of a man with another man, that's your highest achievement. I went to Russia, and when I went to Russia, I saw lots of beards. Oh, yes. Lots of beards in Russia. These are not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. They don't want to transform all of mankind into carbon copies of themselves. No, that's those Christians. These Christians are different. And because Russia is prepared, is not prepared to submit. It's going to checkmate them and NATO can do nothing to stop it. Praise be to Allah, who allowed us to understand the Quran. They're going to be checkmated. The war which is coming, the big nuclear war which is coming, to which we refer subsequently, inshallah, is meant to deliver to Israel something called Pax Judaica, which will replace Pax Americana, which itself replaced Pax Britannica. That's why they want the big war. The war is coming because Russia is challenging their bogus monetary system, that's why. It's not because of Syria. It's not because of Ukraine. It's because of something called BRICS. And so I share with you now, finally, that the Khilafah state will recognize the Orthodox Christian world which today is led by Russia. That these are the people Allah is talking about in the Quran. That they will be closest in love and affection for you. I know Bosnia and Albania and Montenegro are so very uncomfortable with me now. <laughs> but I have a job to do. It's for you to learn. And guidance comes from the Quran, not from NATO. Yes, Bosnia, yes, Albania, yes, Montenegro, yes, Kosovo. Guidance comes from the Quran, not from Washington, okay? So Allah is telling you as plain as a billboard on the road to the airport. These are the Christians who in Akhiru Zaman will be closest in love and affection for you. But they are both in the Quran and in the hadith, indications that we will conquer Constantinople on the basis of an alliance with Orthodox Christians. It will be a Muslim Christian army that will conquer Constantinople. Which Christians will this be? Shall I remind you? Yes. And if you do not build alliances, I do not need the hadith for arguing the case for an alliance with Rome. I do not need the hadith. The Quran is enough for me to argue the case for a Muslim alliance with Rome in Akhiru Zaman. And no hadith and no part of a hadith can challenge the Quran. And so this is what we have to do at this time. To build alliances within ourselves so the house of Islam becomes stronger. And build alliances with those who have the closest love the closest in love and affection for us, so can face a common enemy. The hadith then ends, Fathul Constantinia Khurujid Dajjal, that after the conquest of Constantinople, only then will Dajjal make his appearance in human form. Because now, it's there around the neck of Israel. Israel can't get away now, finish. Dajjal took them for a ride. 
the last ride on which they'll ever go. And now they'll face the end that Firaun faced when he was drowning. <laughs> they will end the same way that Firaun ended. That's the end of Israel. They will now realize the truth that Firaun realized underneath the water.